Hello everyone, this is Crystal. I would like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I'm going to perform a song for you, Breath of Heaven by Amy Grant. And this song is about Mary as she learns that she's going to be carrying the Son of God and her emotions of fear and uncertainty. But through it all, she looks to the Breath of Heaven, the Holy Spirit, to comfort and guide and help her. So I hope you enjoy.
Good morning and Happy New Year. We hope you had a safe New Year's Eve, and I don't know about you, but I'm ready to move boldly and hopefully into 2021. So far, it's a blank slate. It's going to be whatever we make of it. This year promises to open many doors figuratively and literally for us as individuals and as a congregation. We look forward to the call process coming to a completion and to being back here on campus in person. Today is the Epiphany of the Lord Sunday, and we're so pleased to have Chris Christensen sharing the message again. But before we get going, we've got some updates on activities and the status of our facilities. As you know, we are still deep into the COVID restrictions and we will continue to fully abide by the guidelines of our state and county health department. We will stream our worship services and encourage our ministry groups to continue to meet electronically for now. We can do this, everybody. I also wanna remind you that if you have needs, please contact us so we can assist or direct you where you can get help. And also I would encourage you to do a daily inventory of who you will reach out to that day. This is something we can all do no matter how far we might be apart. We are all just a phone call, text, or Zoom away. As we talk about some specific events, I would like to have Amanda share what is going on with our young kids and their families. Give us the scoop, Amanda. Thank you, Tom. Our Kid Connection Sunday School meets every Sunday at 10 a.m. This morning we met for the first time of 2021 and we started our second quarter of our Dig In Curriculum Foundations of Faith. Our third through fifth grade group will meet up again starting next Sunday, so that's the 10th, and they will meet at 1 p.m. Our Kid Connection Parent Fellowship time, we meet every Sunday and we'll be meeting today at 2 p.m. also by Zoom. If you need information about any of these groups, please uh, give me a shout out, uh, email me or give me a call. Take care. Bye-bye. As for our middle school and senior high kids, they both meet on Zoom every Sunday morning and our senior hires will also meet Wednesday nights for food, discussion and games. For our adults, please join us for our weekly Zoom coffee hour right after this service. And we are also restarting our Wednesday evening conversations on Zoom. The next couple weeks, we'll be finishing up the series Guardrails by Andy Stanley. Now, please join in our opening song, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. Oh, 
Please join in the prayer of the day. God of promise and light, open our eyes this morning that we may see your light in the darkness. Open our hearts that we may perceive your promises of justice and righteousness fulfilled in the babe of Bethlehem. May we, like the Magi, have a star to guide us on our journey quest to find the one who will truly set us free. May this time of worship bring us closer to you that the good news of the birth of light and love will transform our lives. Amen. Now, please take a moment and spread some love as we share the peace of the Lord near and far. Peace of the Lord be with you.
Good morning and happy new year. Happy 2021. And I know I'm not alone when I say good riddance 2020, right? I mean, what a year. A year that we focused on who has toilet paper and how we can go to school and how we can just have our lives. It was pretty difficult. But I also look at it as a way, wow, I really learned a lot. I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about the people around me and how important they are to me. And including in those people are all of you and our connections, how important that is. And we've really stayed connected and that's just such a gift. So I look at this year and I say, wow, I've gained some amazing memories. And some of those memories I would like to share with you right now. Enjoy. Thank you, Kid Connection Kids. Thank you, Bethel Lutheran. Thank you, everyone, for being an important part of what we do. 
and we continue to learn from each other and we continue to work together. So with that, I would like to prepare our hearts and mind for prayer. What does that look like? And what does that sound like? Good and gracious God, this past year, 2020, was something that we weren't expecting. It came and we had to deal with challenges and how to live our lives in such a different way. But we did it and we did it by working together and by working through you. And we know that we are not done. There is still so much that we will need to do and continue to do. And we can do this through you, with you. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Happy New Year. I'll see you soon. Take care. The first lesson is from Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 7 through 14. This is what the Lord says. Sing with joy for Jacob. Shout for the foremost of the nations. Make your praises heard and say, Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I will bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the ends of the earth. Among them will be the blind and the lame, expectant mothers and women in labor. A great throng will return. They will come with weeping. They will pray as I bring them back. I will lead them beside streams of water on a level path where they will not stumble, because I am Israel's father, and Ephraim is my firstborn son. Hear the word of the Lord, you nations. Proclaim it in distant coastlands. He who scattered Israel will gather them and will watch over his flock like a shepherd. For the Lord will deliver Jacob and redeem them from the hand of those stronger than they. They will come and shout for joy on the heights of Zion. They will rejoice in the bounty of the Lord, the grain, the new wine, and the olive oil, the young of the flocks and herds. They will be like a well-watered garden, and they will sorrow no more. The young women will dance and be glad young men and old as well. I will turn their mourning into gladness. I will give them comfort and joy instead of sorrow. I will satisfy the priests with abundance, and my people will be filled with my bounty, declares the Lord. Here ends the first reading. The second lesson is from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of his glory. Here ends the lesson. The gospel lesson is from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. Now, there is a John mentioned within this text, and that John is John the Baptist, and a relative of Jesus. Um, and also the word, word, is mentioned, and this is Jesus. The reading goes, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. 
Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. Out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. Here ends the Gospel reading. People of Bethel Lutheran Church in Cupertino and elsewhere, I have some good news for you this morning. It is no longer 2020. Now, I can't promise you what is happening in 2021, and I can't promise you it will be better. But for many of us, this has been a more difficult year, or at least an unusual year. A year that brought us out of our normal way things work into something very different. We're going to talk about that a little today, but first I want to jump into the gospel lesson and I want to talk to you about John's gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Those are the words that John uses to open his gospel, the fourth and final of the four gospels to be written. By the time that John writes, probably all of the other apostles have died or have been killed as John is the only one who will make it to old age. He writes after Mark, after Luke, and after Matthew. And he has probably read at least one of those and has heard about those by the time he writes his gospel. Mark has written his gospel to the Romans, probably after the death of Peter in Rome. Luke has written his gospel to those who are Gentiles, those like us who are not Jewish, and Matthew to those who are Jewish. And he will take in Matthew's account, he will take many of the Old Testament prophecies and show how they came true in Jesus. But John still feels there's a part of the story that is left to tell before he writes his gospel, because John's gospel is written for Christians. John's gospel is not written assuming that you haven't read the others, but assuming that you do know the story, but John is gonna tell us why things happen. So he's not going to start with shepherds and wise men. He's not going to start with following stars. He's not going to start with Herod the Great and his problem with this child that was born or with Mary and Joseph and angelic visitations. John is going to start with those enigmatic words. In the beginning was the word. Now we know that John is talking about Jesus, but he uses this term of the word. And if we don't get the reference to what he's talking about, we have to go back to the beginning. If you go back to Genesis, if you go back to this book that literally means the beginnings, you will find that God speaks into the darkness in chapter 1, and he speaks three words, let there be light. And John is associating Christ with that creative energy of God, saying that Christ was present at the time of creation, the word of God being Jesus, the breath of God and the Holy Spirit, that the Trinity was there at the time of creation, and that Christ was that word that was spoken into 
darkness. And I want to focus on darkness because that is the term that John uses when he says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. It is going back, hearkening to that book of Genesis, where we see that light comes into the world and it is darkness that is defeated. And that's an important lesson for us to know after a year that seemed like it saw its fair share of darkness. At the time John writes his gospel, John has been a disciple for Jesus for a very long time. We understand from the gospels that John is one of the first two disciples of Jesus. In the later on in this chapter, we will read that John and Andrew, or actually, as John tells it, Andrew and another guy, and in John's gospel, we always believe that another guy is John, were followers of John the Baptist. And when John the Baptist looks to Jesus and says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, these two split off and go and follow Jesus. And they ask, Where are you staying? And Jesus says, Come and see. And with that begins an invitation to a lifetime with Jesus, here and then with Jesus after his resurrection. And so John will be a disciple for a long time, but I said that John sees some darkness. Again, by the time he writes this gospel, all of the other apostles are dead and have been killed for their faith. And he has lived through all that. His brother, James, his brother who we seen this relationship that they are fairly close, was the first to die well back in the book of Acts. The only one of the apostles' death, the only one of the remaining apostles' death, not counting Judas Iscariot, that is recorded in the Bible because it is the first that happens under the first persecution by the Jewish leaders. And so John has been in exile John has been surviving while the church has been under persecution, first by the Jewish leaders and later by Nero in Rome. And so John has seen some darkness. And so when John is writing these words that light has come into the world and the darkness has not overcome it, he knows a little bit about what he's talking about. And so in this year that we have had, which for some has been the roughest year, for some it may have been the best year, but it certainly was an unusual year. In this year, it is helpful for us to remember that the light has come into the world and the darkness can't contain it, that the light has overcome. And I think about the writings that we had this morning in the book of Jeremiah. And Jeremiah, in this morning's lesson, tells us to sing aloud, or the Lord tells us through Jeremiah to sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations, proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. And there's a lot of singing and weeping with joy that is contained in these verses of Jeremiah. But you know, I'll be honest with you, I read them a few times as I'm preparing for this talk today. And as I was preparing for the sermon, I read them over and over again. And it wasn't until a few times into it that I realized that all of that Jeremiah is saying is in the future tense. Jeremiah is not talking about he is in a situation that is glad. He says, see, I am going to bring them from the land of the north. I am going to gather those who have been scattered. Because Jeremiah writes at the time of the exile, the Babylonian captivity. Jeremiah is in some ways the saddest of the prophets because he gets to write about the fall of the people as they go off into exile. He later will write lamentations as he sits looking at the ruined city of Jerusalem. So Jeremiah also knew something of darkness. He had watched his people be killed, and he had watched the survivors be exiled, be led away in captivity. But Jeremiah writes with great joy in these particular verses because he writes looking forward to a day that God has promised when God will restore. He looks 
forward to a day when God will gather those that he has scattered. Scattered because of what they did. They were put into captivity in Babylon because of their unfaithfulness to God. But God is a loving God. God is a gracious God. And Jeremiah knows this, and he has been told by God this, reminded by God this. And so Jeremiah, when he writes these words, writes about joy. He writes about joy of what God will do. And so Jeremiah lives at the same time in a time of great, great darkness, but also in a time of hope. It is possible to be both in great darkness and discouragement and also be in a time of hope. And I think some of us have one foot in both of those right now. It has been a tough year. We have not been able to gather together for many months now as we would want to do. We have not been able to get together with our loved ones here coming through this holiday as we, have, as we head into this part of the year with the shortest days, it seems like there is too much darkness. There's been darkness in political things. There's been darkness in racial unrest. There's been darkness in this pandemic. But we also sit with one foot in the future and one foot in hope as Jeremiah did. Not just because we trust in vaccines and vaccinations and doctors and, and masks and all of those sorts of things, but because our hope is not grounded in all that, but our hope is grounded in God. That we believe in a God who is greater than all of these things, no matter what is thrown at us. Now, as I'm writing this this morning, I had an interesting thing because the PG&E guy has just left and there was a gas leak in our house today. And I think of it could have been even worse. And honestly, we will have times that get worse and we will have times that get better. That is not what our hope is in. Our hope is not in our situation, but our hope is in God. Going back to the words of John again, John says, The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And John, in that section that we had today, will go on to say that those who believe in him, he gave power to become the children of God, and further on, that from his fullness we have received grace upon grace. John believes, despite the darkness that he has seen, that he serves a gracious God a God who gives good things to his children, even if they don't deserve it. Now, we're coming out of a season of Christmas here, a season of giving. In fact, we're in the 10th day of Christmas. I don't know how many of you had 10 lords a leaping in your house today, but that would be appropriate. We don't always get gifts from those who love us because we were particularly deserving, uh, to be honest. We get gifts because we are loved. And John sees a God that even in the midst of this darkness where we sometimes find ourselves, lavishes us with grace upon grace. John has been in exile. He has seen the church under persecution, and yet he believes in the good gifts of God and doesn't see the contradiction between those two statements. Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians, which we had today, said that according to the riches of his grace that he has lavished on us. Paul saw darkness as well. Paul, who gives an account in Corinthians of the number of times he was shipwrecked or beaten or jailed or stoned and left for dead, still sees a life that has been blessed by God, still sees the people of God as a gift that has been given to him still sees following God as something that has lavished riches of his grace upon him. And in the midst of the darkness, as Jeremiah was looking forward to the future, looking forward to that restoration, looking forward to the action of God in a dark world, in a bad situation, so Paul also says that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ might live for the praise 
of his glory. Let's say that again. So that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live to the praise of his glory. A couple different things in there. One is, it says that when God adopted us, when God welcomes us to become children adopted into his family through that light that came into the world, as John said, that he had something in mind for us. One is that we might live, even in the middle of this dark world, as people of hope. People who put their hope in Christ. People who act also then towards a better world, who live in the praise of his glory, who live so that God will be praised, who live so that God will be praised in part because of what people see, what little God can, see, what little people may see of God in us. That we are called to be people of hope and we are called to be people who live into the kingdom of God. How can we be both people who live through difficult times and people who live with an unassailable hope? It's difficult to do both, and yet we're called to do that. As we go through this year, as we went through this year, when we came to holidays like Thanksgiving, it might have been a little more difficult to be thankful. But there was much to be thankful for. As we went through Christmas and couldn't gather together as we wanted to do, when we had to greet loved ones from afar on Zoom instead of holding them close, it might have been a little more difficult to be thankful, to remember all that God has given us. And yet we're called to do that. As we look back at 2020, it is easy for us to lay blame. It is easy for us to say that things might have been better if leaders had made better decisions, if other people had made better decisions, if we had made better decisions, if we had acted less selfishly, if we had acted better, if others had acted better, it is easy to lay blame and we would be correct. We live in a broken and fallen world, in a world that is never perfect, in a world that has moved away from God, that has fallen into sin, and that is just true. Some years like this, it may be more obvious but even in the best of years, we live in a broken and fallen world. We live in a world that will have darkness. Your best year may have been last year, and your worst year may be the year to come. I do not know. And we never know. How many of us knew as we came into 2020, so many of us were glad to be done with 2019, if you had a choice, wouldn't you take two 2019s over a 2020? We don't know whether next year will be better or worse. We know that this is still a broken and fallen world. It is still a world that has darkness. But we also know that light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. We know that being unable to meet together does not keep us from caring for one another, does not break the church of God. We know that we can get through times like this in part because of our faith, in part because we believe in a God who is greater than times like this. And that is always true, whether it be 2019, 2020, or whatever 2021 may bring. But 2021 will still be a broken and fallen world, a world that needs the children of God to live into their inheritance, a, chil a world that needs people who are called to be Christians to live into that grace that he lavishes on us, to live with hope set on Christ 
and to live for the praise of his glory. So that maybe we can be a little less selfish. So that maybe we can make a little better decisions. So that maybe we can love a little better. So that maybe we can see past the differences, whether differences be political party or skin color or whatever, to people whom God loves. I pray that we, like Jeremiah, even if we live in times that are filled with darkness, can live in hope, can live with one eye on that coming of God's redemption, when God puts things right, when pandemics stop, when injustice stops, when corruption stops, when selfishness stops, when jealousy stops, when all are called to come under the kingship of Christ, when all are called to live in the light. Amen. We three kings of Orient are bearing gifts. We traverse afar, field and fountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. Oh, star of wonder, star. Please join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we get ready for the prayers of the church, I want to make an announcement that came after we'd recorded. Uh, one of the dear friends of our congregation, Manny Castro, who is the son-in-law of uh, Bill and Karen Hansen, passed away uh, because of COVID the last, uh, last couple days. Um, we will miss him and pray for his family and continue to keep everyone who is struggling with COVID right now, which are so many people in your prayers. So now here's Scott for the prayers of the day. Hello and good morning. By the time you see this, it will be the new year. I sure hope it's a happy new year for everyone. We have certainly learned a lot in 2020 and most of us are ready to turn the page. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we pray for peace in our world, peace for all those suffering in body or spirit. We pray for you to lift up the city of Nashville 
and for the folks who were affected by the bomb there. Lord, we pray for medical staff caring for patients. We pray for families who have COVID-19 or are recovering from COVID or any other illness. Be with the suffering patients and bless the medical workers who care for them. Lord, we pray for first responders and frontline service workers that they stay safe and well. We pray for wisdom and cooperation in our leaders at all levels of government, foreign and domestic, and for the smooth transition for our new leaders. We pray for our leaders and health officials to make the best decisions for the public health. Give them wisdom and discernment to guide our communities. We thank you, Lord, for scientists and medical research that are bringing vaccines to the world. We thank you for the hope for an end to the COVID-19 pandemic. We also pray for parents and students, for students to get their education in spite of changing schedules, and for their parents trying to hold it all together during this time. Gracious God, give us the wisdom to trust in you to lead a new pastor to shepherd us. We pray that our new pastor's heart will now be stirred, feeling the Holy Spirit's call to Bethel to love and care for us, and challenge us with the gospel. Anoint the call committee with perception, imagination, and discernment, trusting in you to be our guide. We also pray for our immediate Bethel community. Betty, Sunnyview Retirement Community, Melanie, Vivian, Shirley, Carol, Gail, and Nick. And we pray for Nick's family after the passing of his brother John this past week. Now we take time to pray for family members, friends, and neighbors who are not on our prayer list. We bring our prayers to you, Lord, and pray the words Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. As we start a new year, we want to thank you for your financial support in 2020 and move forward in faith that Bethel's ministry will continue to be sustained. There are so many needs in this world and your support helps us address them near and far. As you enjoy this song by our All Bethel Choir, you'll see instructions on how to give by mail or electronically through Vanco and PushPay. Enjoy.
Now receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God give you the grace to never sell yourself short. Grace to risk something big for something good. Grace to remember that the world is too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. So may God take your minds and think through them. May God take your lips and speak through them. May God take your hearts and set them on fire. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in our closing song. So now let's go out from here and live boldly, knowing that God is with us. Happy New Year, everyone. Pushing back, pushing back, pushing back, pushing back.